right, welcome everyone, and welcome to another episode of InDesign Live on Tuesday. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to my screen. Thanks for coming in. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay, and thanks for your continued support on uh, watching my videos. Uh, today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite new features in Adobe InDesign. As a matter of fact, I taught uh, a session on this uh, at Adobe Max, and I was shocked by the uh, amount of response that this one feature got. So I guess this is really important to more of you than it is to me. So good afternoon, F. Uh, Smittick, and hello, Savan, and I saw Victoria. I see Dave Clayton in the house, the InDesign guy himself from the UK. Welcome, everybody, and let's go ahead and dive right in. We never punish the people that are on time. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my computer. And now that I'm on my computer, I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, first and foremost, let me go ahead and start a recording just so I'll have this just in case. All right, we got a recording going, and now we're ready. Uh, so I have an InDesign document here that I have used before. Normally when I show this document, I'm showing it uh, for the publish online feature because it's got a lot of interactivity in it. I've used this document for a couple of years now, but I never used it for this particular demo. So imagine if you will, let's, let's page through it first. Uh, let me get out of the type tool. Let's page through it. Imagine if you will, there are multiple pages. Um, some of these are photos. Some of these are videos. Uh, some there's some animations in here. There's some buttons in here that show different things uh, so that when this is published as an ebook or published as a published online document, all those interactions work. But as you might uh, imagine, a document like this would need to go through some uh, proofreading and, 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 you know, editorial process where you might make a PDF and then send it out to people so that they can give you feedback or give you comments on it. So that process hasn't changed. Uh, you still have the ability to export out a PDF for high quality or smallest file size or anything that you want to customize. Uh, you would just go ahead and make your PDF and send it out. Now, whether you send that PDF to one person and they pass it on to the next and they pass it on to the next, which usually won't be the case, or you send it out to multiple people at the same time. So in other words, maybe you send the same PDF out to 20 different people and therefore 20 different people are making comments. In a situation like that, this still works because you have the ability to import PDF comments from multiple people, not just one person. So what's great about that is, um, you know, in some cases you're going to get the same feedback, same person going to, you know, three different people are going to say, oh, you know, you made a typo here or this photo needs to change or whatever. And then a lot of times or most times you're going to get feedback that's different from each person. But here's how the process works. Now, I have the PDF comment panel already here, but if you don't have it here, then you would go up to your file menu and choose import PDF comments. So this is the brand new feature uh, as of two weeks ago in Adobe InDesign. So when I <clears throat> when I do this, you can select one PDF or multiple, P two or more, uh, multiple PDFs from all the people that you got the feedback from. So with that said, I have one from uh, Victoria, I have one from me. Uh, well, I'm just going to select both of those PDFs because they both have comments. They both have different comments. And I'm going to import those comments in. So again, whether it's one PDF with comments, 10 PDF with comments, 50 PDFs with, with comments, it doesn't matter. Import in all the PDFs with comments because they're all going to go to one place. They're going to go to that new panel. So even if you didn't have that panel showing, that panel will open up. Now, what's great about this is it will show who the author of the PDF or I'm sorry, who the author of the comments were. Um, and you might be well, where to get T. White from, where to get Victoria Pavlov from. And it, it took me a second to think about that because if I had put that in as, in, in Acrobat or if I put that in my Creative Cloud account, I would have spelled it out. I would have said Terry White. But then it dawned on me, it's just picking up your machine name because my machine name or my system login is T. White. So that's where it's got, that's where it got that from. So if your system name is HP or Macintosh, whatever, then that's what would show in the comments. Now, you can change that in Acrobat. You can go and change you know, your author name so that your author name is something that makes sense. And you can even change it on the individual comments. Um, 
You can right click and click on properties in Acrobat for the comment and change the name that it says. All right, so with that said, here are all the comments that came in. Like I said, they all go to one place, which is kind of cool. But what's nice is when you click on a comment in a panel, it takes you to it in the document. So the process is open, create your document, export a PDF, send that PDF out to whoever needs to give feedback on it, give them a deadline. They open up the PDF in Acrobat, make all their comments, save it, give it back to you, email it back to you, whatever. You've got this stack of PDFs in a folder. Then you open up that same document and import the, PDF, import the comments in. And they're there. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with, hey, T. -T White suggesting changing the word still to we're. Like, instead of still searching, we're searching. I can actually apply the comment right in context of the design. So if I click accept, it made the change for me in the right font, in the style, in everything that was there, it did it for me. I didn't have to worry about copying and pasting or typing it in separately because that would be a pain in the butt. So it's doing all of that for me. Now, if it is something that is like photographic related, like for example, Victoria's saying, hey, there's something that's too dark, let's click on it. She circled this in Acrobat and said, this photo is too dark. Now that's not a one, you know, I can't like click accept on that and it's gonna lighten up the photo to taste. That would be cool, but it doesn't do that. So that would be a, oh, okay, let me um, right click on this and edit in Photoshop and, and lighten it up and then go from there, provided it's not a video. Um, but I can, once I've done that, I can mark this comment as resolved. In other words, I fixed it, I took care of the problem, it's resolved and then the comment goes away. Now, speaking of that, if the comment wasn't revolved and people did a lot of markup, they did a lot of, you know, arrows and stickers. And for example, um, this one that says darken this photo a bit. Well, what is that one to? When you click, you don't really see anything, but you got to really look closely because there's a blue sticky note. Because remember, that was one of the first comment types in Acrobat, the ability to put a sticky note on something. So that sticky note is there, but it kind of blends in with the photo. So it was, at first, I didn't even see it. I was like, I said that comment on what photo? I didn't really get it. But it, it does give it a blue outline so you can see it, <laughs> but it won't work very well if it's on a blue photo. And it's the sticky note is yellow and it's saying darken this photo a bit. So whether the person draws around the photo, puts arrows on it, um, changes the colors and all that, or they just use a sticky note, those types of comments will show up. Um, so this one needs to be darkened, this one needs to be lightened, I'd probably do them both at the same time. And then once I'm done, I'd resolve it. Now, let's say you got a page where there's a bunch of stuff just cluttering the page. You'll notice in the lower left-hand corner here, there's an eye icon with a line through it. This allows me to quickly hide or turn off all the PDF marks so I don't have to see them if I don't want to. So you can show and hide as needed, um, especially if it's if people drew all over something, you can't even see what it is that needs to be changed. You can temporarily hide all the comments so you can see what it is they're talking about and then turn them back on whenever you're ready. All right, so what else can you do? Now, for example, if I click on this one, there's a line through the word bustling. So it's the colors of the bustling city. And the comment says delete this word, but it's the strike through comment type in Acrobat. So if I were to click accept, it does it for me. It just deletes that word for me if I agree to that comment. Uh, let's see, this one, same thing. Victoria says remove the word bright. So if I accept that, it removes the word bright for me. So you are still in control because you're the one making the document. You can accept or delete comments you don't agree with um, and the, the way you go. So if I click on this one, let's see, it's saying, uh, let's see if I accept this one, this is, should be the word regular and that changed the word frequent to regular. Now this one preparing for the climb looks the same. Oh, wait, I typed the comment in all caps, meaning I think this should be capitalized. So if I accept that comment, it made the uh, type capitalized, but it created an overset situation because the frame was never big enough for that to be capitalized. But again, it's still InDesign, nothing special about it, nothing different about it. So if you made the frame big enough, 
then it would accommodate that type. Um, so it's great for people that are in these situations where before you'd have to send a PDF back out or worse, paper, get back all the comments and have to decipher them and change them right into, you know, you'd have to manually go do all that work. Now it's, it's allowing you to do it right from the comments. So uh, this one was as we were, and it should be were. So the comment actually has a typo in it. This is not, shouldn't be as we were, it should be as we were. So there's a hyphen there that doesn't belong. Now there's no way for me to really correct the comment without going back to Acrobat and that's a waste of time. Um, I can just accept it, but then note that, oh, that shouldn't be we, we are, that should just be were. There we go. As we were leaving base camp. So again, just because people, just because you allow people to give you feedback doesn't mean their feedback is correct. So you might still need to um, make corrections as needed to the feedback itself. All right. So with that said, uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, let's see on this one. Oh, here's one where it should be, the, you know, it's an insert. So the word mountain should be plural. At least that's what the comment says. So if I just accept that, it adds the S to mountains right in between the N and the period. So you can do very precise edits. Now, in this case, move this down to the left, the play uh, play high camp video. That's not something that can automatically, it's just like the photo. That's not something that can automatically be done because the person just drew a circle around it and an arrow where it should go. Uh, InDesign doesn't know what that means. So I'd have to manually accept, yes, I'm going to move this down or no, I'm not and then physically move that type down. So that is one of those that you do have to do manually um, based on the comment, but that's okay. They gave me a, a, an exact indicator where they wanted it to go. So that would be pretty easy to do. Uh, let's see, and dynamic. Ah, this one, let's see if this one is. Okay, so that was uh, again, accepting one that created an overset and needs an extra space. Let's put that space in there. And let's fix the overset. There we go. And of course, there are these oversets can be also fixed with one click um, with the frame options in the, pro the brand new properties panel. All right. Um, so as I'm going through these and accepting them, they're also being checked off. So if you thought you missed something like, oh, I, I didn't do this one. It's not checked. That's because I didn't really do it yet. And then once I click it, it gets the check mark letting me know. And this one says it should be, now this one has two comments. Uh, one should be the author, add John Smith onto it. And the other one, Victoria says, make, make it bigger, change the font to something more handwritten. And again, uh, you know what? I'm the author of this. This is one of those I don't agree with. Uh, I could either mark it resolved or just delete the comment. Uh, so I'm going to mark it resolved and we can have that discussion if it comes back that hey, you didn't make it bigger and so forth and so on. Uh, so with that said, here's some, here's some uh, things to look out for before I let you go if you're going to use this feature. One of the questions that came up during class was, okay, I sent the PDF out. I'm waiting for feedback. That might take a few days. Can I keep working on the document? Yes and no. Yes, of course, you can keep working on the document. But what you shouldn't do is make giant changes to the document, like restructuring the, the locations of things. Because these PDF comments come in and look for the page that they were originally, the text was originally on. And it will shift, you know, to some degree up and down on the same page. But if you take page two and move it to page 30, then it's not, the PDF comments won't work that way because it doesn't know where that stuff all moved. So, Yes, you can keep working on a document. You can keep adding things to the document. You can keep making minor typos and changes or typo changes and fixing things like that, adding new pictures, changing things around. But if you're majorly moving paragraphs and pages around, then it could be that your comments come in and they don't, there'll, there'll just be a question mark on some of them because they don't know where they belong anymore because the page is no longer there anymore uh, or the page isn't where it used to be. So that's uh, one of the questions that comes up. The other one is, and this is this is more of a feature request. Uh, I got you know this this one came up uh, both on Twitter and uh, in the classes. Okay, now that I've done all this, 
is there a way to send this back out with the comments, like in other words, with the PDF comments showing that they've been resolved? And the answer is no. There's the, you can export a new PDF, obviously, but you, it doesn't reflect what's in that PDF panel. So in other words, the changes that you made will be made. They will be in the new PDF, but there's no way to overlap what was in the old PDF, at least automatically, um, with the changes you just made. So keep that in mind as well. So I'm just pointing out some of the, the potential gotchas so you don't go off and do things and then, hey, this didn't work because... You know, the comments I sent out two weeks ago, the document's totally different now. And when they come, came back, they don't look the same. So just keep that in mind. All right. Uh, let's see. I see a comment over there from Magnus. Let's see what this says. Hang on. I'm trying to make the window bigger. Will this work? If the PDF? Oh, the yeah. So the question was, will this work if the PDF? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I've not tried that. I'm going to assume it would because the page structure itself hasn't changed. So the question was, will this work if the PDF with comments is exported as spreads? I'm going to say I'm about 75% sure that it will. You'll have to try it. Just do a simple test and you'll know. But I'm going to think that it does work with spreads. I could be wrong. All right. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. Let's see, maybe jump in, but how does this work with Amazon book files? Um, PDFs are PDFs, so it doesn't matter if it's a book file or not, um, because in the book file, the individual documents are, PD, are InDesign documents. So if you made a PDF of the individual book files, then that would still work. If you made a PDF of the whole book as a book, that should work. As long as the PDFs, as long as the InDesign documents are there once you get ready to import them back in. The main thing is being able to, you know, having the document open that you exported the PDF from. So if you were able to export the PDF, spreads, book, whatever, when it comes time to import them back in, that should go. Again, before you do a big launch and try it out with, you know, hundreds of people, do a quick test. Just export out your spreads, export out your book. Go in Acrobat, make one comment, and bring or two or three, how many you want, bring it back in yourself and test it. So like that one from T. White, that was my own PDF. I made, took it in Acrobat, made some comments, brought it back in to test it just to make sure before I would send it out to everyone that needs to review it. Um, so just keep that in mind. And uh, yes, I think this is awesome too. And I think, yep, great editing uh, in the new InDesign. And again, we will have more new features. I'll talk about some more next week as well. The properties panel is awesome. The new um, uh, ability to relay out a or reformat your document based on changes to the document size is awesome. The new visual font browsing is awesome. There's tons of new things that are cool in this new version of InDesign. This is just one of my favorite new features. We'll see more next week. And with that said, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Cheers.